Hello friends. Now today we are going to learn about the linear programming problem or the solution of linear programming problem by graphical method. <coughs> Apart from graphical method, there are going to be another methods also like uh, there is a simplex method, there is a two phase method, there is a there is a big game method. So these are also methods to solve the linear programming. Uh, but basically the graphical method is the most simplest method to get the solution uh, for this particular linear programming problem and also one of the uh, benefit of the graphical method is that graphical method is going to give the solution uh, in a shortest possible time as compared to the another methods now uh, in this graphical method uh, before going to the actual problems, we need to actually see the what is the going to be the structure of the particular problem or that linear programming problem. So first of all, uh, we will have to see the steps which are there to formulate the linear programming problem. Because as we all know that, first of all, there is going to be a, a data, a simple data is going to be there, which is taken from the past experience or the past records. And the data is to be converted into the mathematical format that is called as a formulation of the linear programming problem. And then the solution for that particular mathematical problem is to be taken out from uh, different types of methods. So here we are going to uh, deal with the graphical method to, so to get the solution for that particular mathematical model. So before going to the solution, we need to actually understand what are going to be that steps whereby we are going to formulate the linear programming problem for graphical method. So whenever we are having the information or the data uh, to formulate the linear programming problem. So first of all, by reading the problem, we will have to decide what is the aim or what is the solution required from the particular problem. Because based on that, we are going to define the decision variables. So these decision variables are going to actually define the particular uh, solution for that particular now, uh, in this decisions variables, decisions variables can be uh, more than two also. So basically, there are generally two basic uh, two decision variables are there, and uh, it may be more than that also. So that the decision variables are going to give the solution for the linear programming problem. So by using this decision variables we are going to consider the objective function objective function in the sense what is going to be the objective of that particular problem or what is going to be there what is the requirement from the particular problem or what should be the solution for the particular problem and that is going to be the this objective function for the particular linear programming problem so this construction of objective function is done by using this decision variable so decision variables are going to play a role while constructing an objective function so this objective function is going to give the solution for the particular problem now the third step that is going to be there is the formulation of the constraint equations now if you see in this particular word constraint constraint in the sense the limitations now already we have constructed the objective function now objective function is obviously going to give the solution but that objective function or that objective cannot be achieved without uh, any limitations because whenever we want to achieve something there are going to be the limitations it the limitations may be the environmental conditions may be the limitation because of the financial constraints may be the limitations because of the labor constraints may be limitations because of the time constraint so these all these such type of constraints are going to be there which are going to limit the objective function so just by knowing the objective function just by knowing the decisions variables we cannot go for the solution so next thing we require to know is the constraints so these constraints are going to be there after the objective function and the fourth one is the non-negative constraints so what is the meaning of the non-negative constraint and why these are required so we will understand this once we will go to the problem now the first and basic um, limitation of the graphical method is that because uh, we know that apart from the graphical method there are another methods also uh, and by these methods also we can solve the uh, linear programming problem but still we are preferring here and graphical method 
so uh, reason behind using this particular graphical method is that uh, it is giving the solution in the shortest possible uh, time so uh, this graphical method is going to give the solution in a shortest possible time but the limitation is that this graphical method can be only used when uh, there are going to be the only two decision variables so this is going to be the uh, basic limitation of this that these are only applicable or the method of graphical solution is only applicable when there are going to be the two decision variables and so that uh, there are another methods because uh, it is not possible that uh, uh, whatever the data we are going to have that data is always uh, required to be converted into the two decision variables because sometimes or the most of the times there are going to be the decision variables more than two also so that time we may not be able to apply this particular graphical method and that time we may need to go for the simplex method or two phase method or the big M method so we are going to solve as we are going to uh, study about only graphical methods so we are going to solve the problems having only two decision variables now let's see what are going to be the steps to solve the linear programming problem by graphical method now the first step uh, which is required to solve the graphical uh, method or the problem by using the graphical method is that already we have formulated the particular linear programming problem in that problem we are having uh, objective function then we are having the constraint uh, constraints and then we are having first is the objective function second is the constraints and another one is the uh, non-negative restrictions so the first thing uh, uh, that uh, we are having is the uh, objective function but uh, though we are having the objective function the first thing while solving the problem is uh, we are going to know about the uh, constraint first so while solving the problem we are going to see the constraint first then we are going to see or we are we are going to convert that each inequality to equation by equating with the zero now uh, when we are having the constraint these are actually the inequalities and uh, we know that whenever we are solving any problem or whenever we want the values of the variables we cannot get that values when we are having the inequalities because we can solve the problem when we are having the equation so here what the important thing is required is that it should be a, an equation and to convert that particular inequality into equation we need to equate it with the zero okay so the first step we have got is the consideration of the constraint first consideration of the constraint first once we will get the constraint so one by one we will convert that inequality or the constraint each constraint into equation by equating with zero so we have to equate with a zero and we have to convert into the equation form the third step uh, that we are going to do is uh, to calculate the coordinates for that equations now uh, we have converted the constraints or inequalities into the equation and uh, then we have gone for calculation of the coordinates so then we are going to calculate the coordinates for that particular equation so one by one we are going to take that inequality one by one we are going to convert it into equation then by comparing with the zero and then for that particular equation we are going to calculate coordinates for that particular equations coordinates are nothing but the values of that particular variables whenever we are going to equate that particular equation with the zero immediately we will get the values for that particular coordinates now the fourth step is going to be once we will get the coordinates for all the inequalities keep it in mind we are going to get the coordinates only for constraints and not for the objective functions so step four is that calculation or sorry step four is that we will have to plot all that coordinated coordinates what we have got from the step three that coordinates we are going to plot on a graph so as we know that we are having only two variables so for each equation we may have either one variable or maximum two variables so we are going to have only minimum one coordinates and maximum two coordinates so by using that coordinates we are going to plot each equation because for each equation we are going to have the coordinates on a graph as a straight line 
so for each equation we are going to have a coordinates so now if suppose there are going to be two coordinates for that particular equations so just we will have to plot that two coordinates for example coordinate of x coordinate of y and that we will have to connect that points and we will get a straight line so for each equation we are going to get one straight line step number five is to show the region for each line as per the inequality sign so uh, now here is going to be actually one more thing because we may have the sign of less than type we may have the sign of greater than type or we may have a sign of equality also so these three types of sign we are going to have and based on that three uh, three types of sign so we are going to consider the region for that particular line so by using this constraint actually this constraint are giving the limitation uh, on the solution and by using these constraints we are going to get the particular region now the step six is that highlight the common region to all constraints that is it will be feasible region now this is going to be the next step that is to get the feasible region and what is the feasible region feasible region is common region to all the constraints now in step number four we have uh, seen that we have plotted each equation on a straight line as a straight line on a graph and we have got the region for each the line as per the inequality sign and uh, respectively as per that particular inequality sign we will get the different types of region but by considering all the constraint we are going to get one common region which will satisfy all the constraint and that common region is called as a feasible region so feasible region is nothing but because the feasible region we are getting which is common for all the constraints for all the constraint so obviously whatever the points we are going to consider in that particular feasible region is going to satisfy all the constraints so any point in the feasible region is going to satisfy all the constraints including non-negativity restrictions so that particular point within a feasible region will satisfy all the constraints at a time so these points are going to be there within a feasible region next step is going to be point out all the corner points of feasible region and note coordinates and then coordinates will give the required feasible solution so next is a point out all corner points of feasible region this thing we will have to keep it in mind only we will have to point out corner points of the particular feasible region so we are going to only focus on the corner points many time this question is also asked so which points we are going to consider from the feasible region to get the solution for that particular linear programming problem so in that case we are going to consider only corner points of that particular feasible region so coordinate points may be different because some uh, some feasible region will have two corner uh, three coordinates points some will have four coordinate points likewise or sometimes it will happen that there is no any feasible region so that cases we are going to study so there we are going to consider corner points only we will note down that corner corner points and we will put a note down coordinates for that particular corner point so we will note down coordinates for each corner point separately from that particular feasible solution and whatever the coordinates we will get from that particular corner points that coordinates individually we are going to put it in a objective function so for each corner point we are going to get the two coordinates and obviously in our objective function also there are going to be the two variables so that coordinators that coordinates are kept in objective function for the each and individual point and for that particular point with respect to that point and that coordinates we are going to get the value for this objective function so if there are going to be the four corner points we are going to get four different values for the objective function it may be a zero it may be a more than that so and from that particular solution because multiple solutions we are going to get so as many coordinates that many 
solutions or answers are going to be there for this particular objective function but based on the nature of objective function so whether objective function is of maximization type or it may be a minimization type and already we have discussed that whenever we are considering about the about the profit then we are having the objective function as maximization whenever we are considering about the problem uh, of investment about the problem of cost that time we are having the uh, objective function as minimization so if minimization will be there we will select minimum value from this obtained values if your objective function is maximization type we will select maximum value from our obtained solution so these are the common steps which are required to solve the any type of graphical problem now let's we will solve uh, problems by using this particular steps let's take the first problem now the first problem is like this newly set up a small scale ice cream company is planning to launch two types of ice creams in the market that is chocolate and mango flavored so it means that a newly set up small scale ice cream company is there and that ice cream company wants to launch two different types of ice creams that is a two different uh, types of ice creams with two different flavors that is chocolate flavor and mango flavor now as per the market survey local market can have maximum demand of six boxes of chocolate ice cream and one box of right and uh, it says that one box of chocolate ice cream requires 2 hours of production while mango flavor takes 4 hours for one box production so once again we will see this as per market survey local market can have maximum demand of 6 boxes of chocolate ice cream so market says that only it can accommodate only 6 boxes of chocolate ice cream one more condition is given that one box of chocolate ice cream requires two hours for production means in a two hours one box of chocolate ice cream is prepared or the produced while uh, to produce a mango flavored ice cream so one box requires four hours so chocolate ice cream requires two hours for one box and for mango flavor ice cream four hours are required so obviously double as compared to the chocolate ice cream daily working hours of company are 20 so daily the company is working or the labors are available for 20 years while company can produce nine boxes totally per day so company can produce nine boxes totally per day so it is said that totally it means by considering mango flavored ice cream as well as chocolate flavored ice cream so both the type of ice cream or by considering both type of ice cream there are total nine boxes which can be produced daily so it means that by working of by working for 20 hours company is able to produce nine boxes which includes chocolate ice cream as well as mango ice cream next is that profit per box is rupees 10 and rupees 8 for chocolate and mango flavored ice cream boxes respectively it means that not a one ice cream it is saying per box means one box of chocolate ice cream will give rupees 10 profit to the company and one box of mango flavored ice cream is going to give rupees 8 for the company now the obviously a question is simple that how much production of each ice cream boxes should be done to maximize the profit so the company is having a simple question is that how much should be the production of chocolate flavored ice cream and mango flavored ice cream so there are going to be different condition a company can go for only chocolate flavored ice cream if profit is more a company is can go for only mango flavored ice cream if profit is more or there may a there may be the combination of production of chocolate flavored ice cream and mango flavored ice cream but provided that it should give a maximum profit so whatever the condition may be it should give maximum profit okay so let's see solution first of all 
first of all we will and we will uh, have to understand what is the objective of the particular problem so uh, mostly objective is specifically given in the problem this is the data of that we are having now looking at the data we will get a clear picture of the objective that company wants to maximize the profit by production of chocolate and mango flavored ice cream so simple objective function is that maximization of profit and how the company is going to maximize the profit by production of ice cream boxes with chocolate flavor and mango flavor two different types of ice creams and two different types of boxes so the question uh, that company is facing that how many boxes of chocolate flavored ice cream and how many boxes of mango flavored ice cream because as many number of boxes we are going to multiply it with the that much profit and simply we will get the exact profit so objective function is to maximize the profit how by going or by selling the chocolate flavored ice cream and mango flavored ice cream so the question is simple what should be the number of boxes for chocolate ice cream number of boxes for mango ice cream so our first consideration will be there are going to be x number of boxes there are going to be x number of boxes for chocolate ice cream and there are going to be y number of boxes for mango flavored ice cream so simple consideration we have made that x number of boxes of chocolate ice cream and y number of boxes of mango ice cream so immediately we will get the objective function so our decision variables are two different decision variables the first one is x second one is y x represent number of boxes of chocolate ice cream y represent number of boxes of mango ice cream now this objective function simply it has been given that we will have to maximize the profit so i have taken maximize z you can replace the z also that will not be a question so maximize z now a single box of chocolate ice cream is giving profit of rupees 10 so there are x number of boxes so total profit is going to be 10x similarly a single box when it is sold it is going to give the profit of rupees 8 that is a mango flavored ice cream such we are having the boxes y number of boxes so one box profit rupees 8 y box profit will be 8y and the total profit is going to be 10x plus 8y 10x for chocolate flavored ice cream 8y for mango flavored ice cream so this is going to be the objective function for the particular problem this is what the first step was second step is going to be the to decide the constants because see as many number of boxes company will produce that is going to be the profit but it is not as simple as like that because there are going to be some restriction and restrictions are simply given here that market can accommodate only six boxes of chocolate ice cream then again one box of chocolate ice cream requires two hours of production for mango box it requires four hours of production so that is going to be the limitation for the particular boxes now let's go for constant equation okay now one by one we'll see the constants now the first thing is given in the problem is that local market can have maximum demand of six boxes of chocolate ice cream that means maximum number of boxes that can be sold in a market for chocolate is six means six boxes of chocolate ice cream can be sold and we have considered how much x boxes of chocolate ice cream so it means the number x the value of x can be maximum six or less than that so it will give clear picture that value of x should be either equal to six or less than six so we will get the first constraint that means x is going to be either equal to 6 or less than 6 because market can accommodate only 6 number of boxes so this is what the first constraint equation it is very simple to get now the second constraint as the problem we will read uh, sentence by sentence accordingly we will get the constraints second sentence is that one box of chocolate ice cream requires 2 hours for production and mango box requires 4 hours of production now 
how many boxes of chocolate we have considered x number of boxes one box require how much time 2 hours so total number of total time required will be 2x and second is mango flavored box requires 4 hours for one box how many boxes we have considered y number of boxes so total time will be 4y but company daily working only for 20 hours so 2 hours for one box of x total box number of boxes are x 2x plus 4y it cannot be more than 20 hours because total time cannot be more than 20 hours that is the working time of daily so the next equation next constant will come out as 2x plus 4y 2x that is the time required total time required for chocolate flavored ice cream box production 4y that is the total time required to produce ice cream boxes with mango flavor this total time should not be more than 20 it either equal to 20 or it will be less than 20 so we will get the symbol here now two constants we have got what is the third line while company can produce nine boxes totally per day that means total production capacity of the company is nine boxes totally totally it means by considering chocolate as well as by considering mango so number of chocolate boxes are x number of mango boxes are y and total number of boxes can be maximum 9 or less than that. So third constant we will get as x plus y. That means total number of boxes can be either equal to 9 or it can be less than 9. But it cannot be more than 9 because that is going to be the total uh, production capacity of the company. So this is what three constants we have got. And one more third step we will have to go is a non-negativity constant because see we have considered the x number of boxes and the number of boxes can be zero maybe we will not go for the production of chocolate ice cream maybe we will not go for the production of mango based ice cream but it can be zero but it cannot be negative that means x must be either zero or more than that y must be either zero or more than that so that that constant also we will have to consider that is called as a non-negativity constant and it should be x and y must be either equal to 0 or it must be greater than that. So, this entire structure is called as a formulation of linear programming problem starting from considering objective function, then getting constraints, these three are constraints and then negative non-negativity constraint that is going to be the last part of formulation of Okay, so uh, now we have come up to the third step that is uh, formulation of the mathematical model. We have seen the formulation of the objective function by using the decision variables. We have seen to consider the constraint that is going to give the limitation on this objective function and last one is a non-negativity constraint. Now let's see how to solve this particular problem. Now the like, next step we have seen was to convert this constraint because if we were to solve this uh, particular problem we will have to convert these constraints because here is less than less than less than that we will have to convert into equality okay so the first constraints we are having because already we have seen that the only we are going to consider first constraints so first constraint we are having is that x is less than or equal to 6 now to procedure to convert the inequality into equality is that just to compare it with the zero or uh, make it uh, equal equation and compare to the zero so once we will make it the equation this first will become x is equal to 6 because simply it is a uh, single variable constraint so it will uh, it is a simple so it will simply become x equal to 6 there is no question of the y now the second uh, constraint is a 2x plus 4y less than equal to 20 2x plus 4y less than equal to 20 now how we are going to convert this simple 2x plus 4y equal to 20 2x plus 4y equal to 20 then when when we will put x equal to 0 when we will put x equal to 0 that time immediately so first when we put the x equal to 0 so this 2x will become 0 and 20 by 4 will become y equal to 5. Same step we have to repeat for another variable. Now I will keep y equal to 0 
and I will get x as 10. So we have got the two variables this y equal to 5 and this x equal to 10. Similarly for third constant we are having x plus y equal to 9. First of all we will convert into equality x plus y equal to 9. Then once we will put x equal to 0 we will get the value of y. Then we will put y equal to 0 we will get the value of x. Okay, so when we will put x equal to 0, we will get y equal to 9. When we will put y equal to 0, we will get the x equal to 9. So a simple step to calculate all these things is that just to put once x equal to 0, then y equal to 0 and then easily we will get the values of x and y. So uh, we have got the values of x and y. Now we will have to plot these coordinates on the graph so so uh, finally we have got all the three coordinates uh, coordinates for all the three constraints a simple method is that just convert inequality sign into equality by putting and then put a va one variable equal to zero you will get another value put the second variable equal to 0 you will get the first one value so by this way you are going to get the all the variables for all the constants now we will have to plot this all the constants on graph so once we will get the coordinate we will start to plot the graph now let's start uh, plot the graph by using this particular coordinate so uh, we are having the two variables and uh, that two variables will plot on a two different lines now first we'll have a x-axis then we will have the y-axis now looking to the values of x and y because uh, minimum value of x is uh, 9 6 and maximum value of x is 10 minimum value of y is 9 maximum value of y is 5 so maximum up to 10 uh, we are required only that much of coordinates on the axis so accordingly you can uh, distribute the coordinates so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 similarly at the y axis also we will have the coordinates right so the judgment of this uh, coordinates is going to be taken from this uh, values of the particular coordinates so just you will have to see the maximum uh, value of the coordinates and that can be there on the axis now let's uh, see one by one how we have to uh, draw the particular lines on the uh, graph Okay, so the first equation is x equal to 6. So it is going to be the now. Okay, before that, uh, the we are having the constant as x comma y must be either greater than or equal to 0. That means all our coordinates or all the lines are going to be in a first quadrant only. Okay, so these symbols will show that uh, we are going to plot all the graphs in a first quadrant okay so let's take the first uh, equation that is x equal to 6 so this line is going to be exactly vertical line so it is going to be the vertical line because x equal to 6 that means parallel to y and at this juncture of 6 this line will is going to be there this line is for x less than uh, equal to 6 now as x is less than 6 that means all the values of x must be less than 6 less than 6 means inside this particular line because if i will take any point in this region it will reflect the value of x more than 6 so i need either value on this line or uh, just less than this so the region will be this way this arrow is going is showing that we are considering this region now let's go for the second line so this is going to be the second line based on the equation 2x plus 4y equal to 20 so x0 y5 y0 x10 so value of x is 10 so here is the 10 value of y is 5 just plot these two points and connect these two points using this straight line so this i have connected by using this straight line x is equal to 0 y equal to 5 this is for equation 2x plus 4y less than equal to 20 again here the value of 2x plus 4y is going to be less than 20 that means below the line if it is a greater than 20 we have been considered the region above the line but it is now less than 20 so we will consider or this arrow is showing the region below the line this arrow is showing the region below the line this is the second constraint the third constraint is x plus y equal to 9 x is 9 y is 9 so here x is 9 y is 9 
we have plotted these two points and connected with the straight line. So the equation is x plus y less than equal to 9. Obviously it is again less than so region will be below the line. Region is going to be below the line. Now if you will observe that all the regions are below the lines. So uh, we are going to easily trace a common region to all the lines. Because if you will consider this vertical line, this is going to be the region uh, shown by these lines. So common region is going to be only these regions starting from 0 to 6 to this crossing point along this line and up to the 5 and it will flows here. So this is going to be the closed loop for that particular line. So see here, we have got this region as a, this particular common region and we know that this common region is called as feasible region so whatever the region that has been shown with yellow color this is going to be the common region once again you can review these arrows this is showing this way this is showing this way this is showing this way and this is showing to the downside so totally we are going to give going to get this is going to be the common region so now if you take any of the point in this yellow region it will satisfy all the limitations by all these lines now suppose if i will take the point here it will not satisfy the limitation by this line or by this line if i will take point here it will not satisfy the limitation by this line okay so these are going to be the, this is going to be the common region which is called as a feasible region okay so our objective function is maximize z equal to 10x plus 8y okay so now next step that we have to calculate the corner points and then the value of z okay so one by one we will see the corner points where are the corner points how many corner points are there this one that is denominated as a then the coordinates for that particular point a are 0 comma 0 here is the point second is the point b you can easily observe that here x equal to 6 and y equal to 0 so coordinates for b will be 6 comma 0 next point is here at the crossing of the line this second and the first line so c point the coordinates are obviously x equal to 6 is clear here and y equal to 2 so once you will plot this graph on a graph paper you will easily get the coordinates otherwise one more method is that so we will get the coordinates for the point c as 6 comma 2 so i have already told that one more method to calculate coordinate is whatever the crossing point is there this crossing point is on the line first and this line second so if you solve the equations for these two lines you will get easily the coordinates else uh, as and how we are uh, uh, plotting this particular graph on a graph paper easily you can get the coordinates and the next point is here so that is a point d so this d point obviously the value of y is 5 if you put that value in the equation of this line you will get the value for x and it is 0 okay so it is on the vertical line of y so x 0 y 5 now the next step that uh, has been seen uh, while we are we were seeing the steps to solve the linear programming problem by graphical method the next step was to put these particular coordinates individually in this particular objective function these coordinates are nothing but the values of x and y for example at the corner point a value of x is 0 value of y is 0 here value of x is 6 value of y is 0 just we'll have to put that value and we'll have to calculate the value of z so once uh, when i will put x 0 y 0 value of z is going to be 0 when i will put x equal to 6 y equal to 0 so 10 into 60 is going to be 60 second third coordinate is 6 comma 2 so x equal to 6 y equal to 2 so 10 into 6 60 plus 8 into 2 16 so it is going to be 76 and when i will put the 0 and 5 x equal to 0 that means 10 x will be 0 and 8 y means 8 into 5 it is going to be 40 okay so for these four coordinates we are going to get the four different values of z now out of this we have been asked to calculate the maximum value of z so out of these four values of z the maximum is z equal to 76 and this is going to be the answer so maximum value of z is 76 when x equal to 6 and y equal to 2 so that means x we have considered for number of chocolate flavored ice cream boxes and y we have considered for number of 
mango flavored ice cream boxes so simply we can say chocolate flavored ice cream boxes are going to be 6 and mango flavored ice cream boxes are going to be the q and that is going to be the final solution okay so maximum profit is rupees 76 when company will produce six number of boxes of chocolate ice cream and y number of boxes of mango ice cream this is how we will get the solution for this linear programming problem by using the graphical method now let's see some uh, more examples so we will get the exact clarity okay now one more example is there now we will directly take the uh, mathematical formulation of the linear, linear programming problem because already we know the process how to formulate the problem by from the data we are having okay so simple problem is there minimization of z equal to 2x plus 3y subjected to x plus y less than 30 y greater than equal to 3 x less than equal to 20 y less than equal to 12 and x minus y greater than equal to 0 so here we have taken a such a problem that all the types of constraints we have considered here it is a lesser than type it is a greater than type it is x minus y type also because this is going to be the different equation okay and obviously last this is called as a non-negativity constraint non-negativity constraint okay let's see the solution okay so the first step once we will get the mathematical problem but the first step is to consider one by one each constraint equate it with equate the variables with zero and get the coordinates for x and y x and y okay where there is a no x get the coordinate for y where there is a no y get the coordinate for x okay so the first constraint is x plus y less than equal to 30 when we will convert it into equation it will become x plus y equal to 30 put x equal to 0 you will get y equal to 30 put y equal to 0 you will get x equal to 30 okay so coordinates are x 30 y 30 second is y greater than equal to 3 when you will convert it into equation it will simply become y equal to 3 third is x less than equal to 20 when you will convert it into the equation it will simply becomes x equal to 20 fourth constraint is y less than equal to 12 when it will be converted into the equation it will simply become y equal to 12 and the fourth last fifth last constraint is x minus y greater than equal to 0 when it will be converted into the equation that means x minus y equal to 0 so ultimately it will become x equal to y so whatever will be the value of x same is going to be the value of y okay so the first coordinates are x 30 y 30 second is y equal to 3 third is x equal to 20 fourth is y equal to 12 okay so fifth intentionally i have uh, once again written this particular constraint x minus y greater than equal to 0 we will uh, let you know that uh, why it is required here and its coordinates are x equal to y that means whatever value of x same is going to be y okay so now we are having the all the coordinates so now we will go for plotting of the particular graph okay so we'll have the x axis we'll have the y axis and as i have stated earlier just see the values of x and y and accordingly you will have to plot the coordinates so maximum value of x is 30 maximum value of y is 12 okay so maximum we need coordinates up to 30 that will satisfy all the numbers okay so 0 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 and 50 okay we have taken in the step of 5 similarly at y axis we have been taken up to 50 okay so as and when each problem will have the solution in first quadrant only so it is going to be in first quadrant okay so let's take the first coordinate x 30 y 30 x 30 y 30 so this is going to be the straight line which will represent x 30 and y 30 y 30 so this is for equation number first and it is actually a lesser than type equation it was lesser than type equation so i will consider region below the line region below the line now second y equal to 3 so y equal to 3 line will be plotted here because x is 0 here so y is equal to 3 it will be parallel to x axis this is the second line and it is also it was greater than 3 y was greater than 3 so greater than means above the line lesser than below the line greater than above the line okay so third is x equal to 20 
so it will be again straight line and that is parallel to y this equation was x less than 20 x less than 20 that means towards origin or less than or below the line so it is a third equation and this is going to be the region okay so in equality sign will specify the region fourth is y equal to 12 it will be again line parallel to the x-axis this is a fourth equation and it is again less than type so region will be below the line below the line okay now the fifth equation is x equal to y x equal to y means whatever the value of x that will be the value of y so x0 y0 x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 so it is going to be a straight line passing through coordinates that uh, that is the origin it will be a straight line so it is going to be fifth okay now here comes why i have taken this particular inequality constraint once again here x minus 5 greater than equal to 0 okay so now if you will uh, put uh, these values here the value of x and y if you will try to put the value of x and y you may uh, understand that this subtraction x minus y must be either equal to 0 or greater than 0 when it is going to be equal to 0 when the value of x and value of y is going to be same that time it is going to be 0 but when we want it is greater than 0 that means the value of x must be greater than value of y then only we will get the positive value and it is going to be greater than 0 so if you will specify so value of x must be greater than value of y so if i will take any value in this region means above the line region so just if i will take the uh, 20 if i will take the 20 so 20 here i have taken so here it is a uh, y equal to 20 y equal to 20 and if i will move parallelly to the lower side x becomes 15 x 15 y 20 so it will be negative answer and that will not satisfy this constraint so obviously all the point must be in this region lower region so that we have considered the lower region this region okay so according to all these coordinates we have got this particular region okay so here you will understand which region we have got this is the common region and this is called as a feasible region this yellow colored region is called as a feasible region which is going to be the common region for all the lines you just uh, refer this particular arrows you will get the common region now we are having these boundary points this one this one this one this one these are called as a corner points which will give the required solution okay so our objective function is minimize z equal to 2x plus 3y corner points and values of z so first corner point is a already i have told you that just solve the equation for these two lines where is the where there is a uh, crossing point you will get the coordinates okay on otherwise whenever we are uh, plotting this particular uh, lines on a graph easily we can plot uh, get the coordinates by moving parallel to x and parallel to y axis else uh, this we have no we know that this is the line parallel to x axis having the value as y equal to 3 so we know the value of y equal to 3 just put that value in this equation of line so it will be clear so it is going to be 3 by 3 because this point is on the line x equal to y so once y 3 x is going to be 3 so 3 by 3 or 3 comma 3 is a corner point second is the point b you can go clockwise or you can go anti-clockwise that will not be a matter b point so again here is a one horizontal line which has been plotted at y equal to 12 that means y coordinate we have got 12 and another crossing point is on the line x equal to y so x 12 y 12 we'll get the coordinates 12 comma 12 next point is c on horizontal line where y is equal to 12 just we want the value of x so put the y equal to 12 value in on this line equation uh, first you will get the value of x it is 18 18 comma 12 another is a d here is a straight line which is having the value of x as a 20 put the same uh, value 20 in the equation of this first equation you will get the value of x it is 10 so it is 20 comma 10 
and last point is E. Here also one is horizontal line having the value of y as 3, one is vertical line having the value of x as 20. So 20 comma 3 is a clear. So mostly the points will get easily. Now the next step we know that just put these coordinates into this objective function. So x3 y3 when you will put you will get the value of z as 15. x12 y12 value of z will be 60. x18 y12 value of z will be 72. x20 y10 value of z is 70 x20 y3 value of z is going to be 49 and what has been asked calculate the minimum value of z so what is the minimum value out of this that is z equal to 15 z equal to 15 when x is 3 y is 3 so as minimum value is 15 for coordinates at a that is x equal to 3 and y equal to 3 so this is going to be the final answer let's see one more example or one more different type the problem is minimize z equal to 200x plus 300y subjected to 2x plus 3y greater than equal to 200 1200 second is x plus y less than equal to 400 2x plus 1.5y greater than equal to 900 that is constant number 3 and x plus x comma y greater than equal to 0 so here also we are having different types of uh, constants lesser than also and greater than also okay so the first step that we need to go for is the Cons conversion of this constant inequality constraints so uh, we are having these uh, three constants uh, and also of different types because uh, one is of greater than type one is of lesser than type and the function objective function as minimization minimize that equal to 200x plus 300y okay so as per the regular practice we are having a first step as to convert all the constraints into equation then calculation of coordinates and plotting of the coordinates on a graph okay so simple let's convert 2x plus 3y greater than equal to 1200 into equation so it will be 2x plus 3y equal to 1200 then once we'll put x equal to 0 calculate y then put y equal to 0 calculate x okay so we will get x equal to 600 y equal to 400 because when x will be 0 1200 by 3 will be 400 so y will be 400 when y will be 0 x will be 1200 by 2 that is a 600 okay so first coordinates are 600 and 400 second is x plus y less than equal to 400 so simple when you will convert it into equation simple x equal to 400 y equal to 400 third is 2x plus 1.5y greater than equal to 900 here when we will convert it into equation when, when once we will put y equal to 0 then x will be equal to 450 and when we will put x equal to 0 then y, y will be equal to 900 divided by 1.5 that is 600 so coordinates are 450 comma 600 okay so these are going to be coordinates for three different types of constraint okay so as a routine practice we'll have to plot it on a graph okay so let's have a x axis let's have a y axis okay once again the same practice we are having the maximum value of x as 600 maximum value of y as 600 so we want the coordinates up to at least 600 okay so we'll plot in this format 0 100 2 3 4 5 and 600 similarly along the y-axis 0 100 200 300 400 500 and 600 okay now we are having the non-negativity constraint that is x comma y greater than equal to 0 so all the values are going to be in a first quadrant okay so it is going to be in a first quadrant okay so let's take the first coordinate 600 comma 400 so here is a 600 here is a 400 so this is going to be the first line which will connect 0. 0.600 and 400 for equation number constraint 1 okay so it is greater than so it will be above the line above the line or away from the origin above the line okay so it is a greater than type okay so it will show these arrows are showing it is above the line okay so let's go for second this was the first second is x 400 y 400 so x 400 y 400 it is less than 400 less than 400 means below the line so these are going to be the below the line below the line means below towards the origin for second equation 
Third is coordinates are 450 and 600. So here is 450, here is 600. So it is going to be these line connecting the two points 450 and 600. And inequality is greater than type means above the line. So this is above the line. This is above the line. Okay. So now if we will think that the first equation is showing above the line. Second is showing below the line. Third is showing above the line. Now we will have to find out a common region which is called as a feasible region. Okay. We can see here now. Here is going to be. These are going to be region. Because these lines are showing above the line these are lines are showing below the line so there is no any common region so i have written here as there is no any common region hence it is not possible to get feasible region because common region itself is called as a feasible region so this is called as infeasible solution because we are going to get the solution from corner points of feasible region but here feasible region is not available because it is there is no any common region no any common region means no any feasible region no any feasible region means no any coordinate points and that means solution is infeasible so this is the one of the type of the linear programming problem so it can be uh, because of the constraints constraints are of different types which are not giving a possible required solution okay let's see one more problem maximize z equal to 40x plus 60y subjected to 2x plus y greater than equal to 70x plus y greater than equal to 40x plus 3y greater than equal to 90 and non-negativity constant as x plus y x comma y greater than or equal to 0 okay so coordinates so we'll convert the first constant into equation now this is going to be simplest process equate it equal to 70 put x equal to 0, y will be 70, put y equal to 0, x will be 70 by 2, 35. Second constant, put uh, x plus y equal to 40, so x 40, y 40. Third constant, if we will keep here the equality sign, so x will be 90 when y will be 0 and x when x will be 0, y is going to be 90 by 3, that is a 30. So coordinates are these for three constants, we will plot the coordinates along the graph so x-axis y-axis now maximum value of x is 90 maximum value of y is 70 so we want the coordinates within this only 70 or maximum to 90 so 0 20 30 40 50 60 7 90 again 10 20 30 40 60 70 and 80 so uh, we can have y up to maximum 70 okay so So, we are having the coordinates as per the values we have got here. Now, non-negativity constant is x comma y greater than or equal to 0. So, all the points are going to be in a first coordinate only. Okay. So, now let's plot the equations along the this graph. Okay. So, first coordinate is 35 comma 70. x is 35, y is 70. Let's connect the two points for the first equation. Constant is saying that it must be greater than or equal to 70. So, greater than symbol means above the line. It will show above the line. So, these arrows are showing region is considered above the line. Second constant is x40, y90. x40 and y90. So, sorry, x40 and y40. So, it is x40 and y40. This is going to be the second constant and it is also greater than. So, above the line. Third constant is x90, y30. x90 and y30 so this will be connected like this and this is also greater than type so it will also show the region above the line so these two zeros are showing region above the lines okay so now in this case all the constant are showing the region above the line so obviously this region is going to be like this so this is going to be the region that is an open region so that it is called as unbounded solution it is called as the unbounded solution because this is not bounded by any boundary this size the boundary is there but this size it is not bounded and uh, in this case we will not be able to calculate the answer so it is 
called as unbounded solution so this is also one of the special case of the linear programming problem hopefully you might have enjoyed the lecture then please do like the video and know your thoughts in comments please do share this video among your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel after subscription you can press the bell icon to never miss the notification regarding our new videos thank you thank you so much